Okay, thanks, Derek. Um, so I have a very short section uh, just explaining two new features that are freshly out of beta. In fact, one of them is only half out of beta. I'll uh, explain more when that comes up. So this is um, space claim based hex meshing and also feature tracking within uh, space claim. Right, so um, I'll, be, I'll be covering the hex meshing through the power of PowerPoint, and then I'll just do a bit of a demonstration of the space claim feature tracking tool, so you get a bit more of a feel for um, how that works. Okay, so this is a new meshing tool that's based within the space claim environment, so, so it's not in mechanical like we normally do our meshing. It's all within space claim. So it's designed to provide um, a more interactive uh, tool to allow you to get high quality hexahedral meshes onto complex geometry. So we've got the multi-zone mesher, which is really great for sort of slightly complicated geometry to get a very fast mesh output. And it's getting more and more robust with each release. But there's a limit to how, how uh, complex your geometry can be with the multi-zone mesher. So these are the sorts of uh, problems that we're really talking about. So we have some sort of casing here that would be extremely difficult to get a hexahedral mesh on without some sort of technique like uh, blocking or um, you know, some of the other methods that we use. So something like that, using blocking, it would take probably a couple of days to get a good hexahedral mesh on it. Um, so uh, here with uh, this disc broker, we could probably get a hex mesh on that using the multi-zone mesher, but some of these other bodies would be an absolute nightmare. <clears throat> so this new meshing tool is really aimed at these sorts of problems. And a side effect of uh, having these new interactive tools is we can do um, some template modeling. So I'll explain that when that comes up. So these are the new tools. So if you open up Space Plane, uh, you'll see a new bar, uh, the mesh bar here. Uh, this says beta because this screenshot was taken in R1. In R2, you'll see that beta has gone away. So we have all these new tools across here. So the first one is this play pause button. So this different this is different from most measures where it sort of live updates as you make changes to your mesh. Um, if that annoys you or if your model is so big that it's slowing things down, you can just hit pause and then make a few changes and then hit play again. So these are the three uh, different um, meshing techniques. So this is the traditional one that we've used in Workbench, where we take our geometry and we would split it up into sweepable regions, um, possibly design one over space claim, chuck them into a multi-body part, sweep that part around there, and then sweep these parts through there, and you get a pretty good quality mesh on that. Then on the far right, we have what's called the blocking method. So this is an older method, uh, but it's very powerful. It's very labor-intensive. Um, basically, you take your geometry, create some sort of primitive blocks, and then you start splitting the blocks up. And then you map or associate the features of the blocks onto the features of the topology, and you end up with this mesh. Um, so you can do that in, say, ISIM CFD. Now, what I'm talking about is a hybrid approach, where we basically generate a mesh using a multi-zone mesher, and then we use the interactive tools to tweak the mesh and we can change sizing, we can um, map parts of it, we can change the topology of the mesh in, in a very interactive sense. So here's a bit of an example. We have our body, we've done a, a multi-zone mesh around it, a multi-zone mesh on it, but we want to sort of change the topology of the mesh through here so we can split it up and morph the surface. Or we can map this space here down onto this surface so that we get more of a mapped mesh through, the, through that region. So I'll quickly go over, oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead one slide in my head. Um, this is the sweeping tool. So this body might not be sweepable with the normal um, sweep method that we have in mechanical, but this allows us a lot more control than the traditional sweep method where we can mesh one face and then just drag it along. And as we reach, sort of, um, as we reach points in the geometry where it's difficult to sweep any further, we can tweak the mesh and change size and controls, tweak the topology, and then drag it a little bit further. So we can progressively sweep through the geometry. And we end up with more control over the element quality, and um, we can get a mesh on geometry that traditionally you wouldn't be able to. So these are some of the tools. So first we have the uh, add, edit, delete, the element sizing, map um, layer, and match tools. So this is where we just chuck a multi-zone mesh on it. 
And then we might add some sizing, as you can see here. And then maybe we want to add some layers to the mesh, like a boundary layer, or we want to create an overgrid out of the mesh. So we just basically chuck the layer feature on, and then we can tweak that. So you can see it's kind of interactive. Rather than adding controls and then hit generate mesh, we basically add a mesh, and then we add controls, and then we just sort of tweak the mesh by hand. Um, here we're using a match control, so we get um, the same mesh on this face as the other face. <clears throat> then we have the select, move, pull, blend, and project uh, tools. Uh, the pull one you can see there, we're basically pulling the mesh, um, uh, pulling the geometry features. Here we're using a blend feature to blend the mesh through the geometry features there. Um, and project, we want to basically take the mesh that we have here and then project that through, so we're sweeping the mesh through that solid body. Uh, then split, merge, associate, and shape and link. So this uh, associate tool is more akin to the traditional blocking method where we create these block primitives and then associate the features of the block to the geometry. So we just mesh this geometry, the blocking, and then once it, once it maps onto the more complex geometry, the mesh morphs onto, onto that. Then this shape link tool allows you to morph the topology of the mesh. So as you can see here, we're sort of creating splines in the mesh topology, so you can shape the mesh the way you want. <clears throat> so once you've got a mesh, uh, you can take that into mechanical, and you don't have to mesh all of your bodies in your assembly using the <coughs> space stain meshing tool. You could, as we see in this case, mesh the rotor using the space stain meshing tools, and leave all the other parts to mesh in the mechanical meshing tools. And once you bring them into mechanical, the parts that have already been meshed will be suppressed so that it doesn't mesh them twice. And then you'll only have to mesh these other parts that you can see the, the green tip on them, so they're the unmeshed parts. And we can also parameterize this. So you can parameterize all the mesh controls, you can still parameterize the geometry, and you can do optimization based on those parameters. Now, a nice side effect of this, as I mentioned before, is the template modeling um, method. So if we have a geometry, so a fairly complex geometry that we want to hex mesh, we want to do multiple um, simulations of variations of this geometry, we can create a template and reuse that. So we make up some sort of block template like this, and we create name selections for all the vertices and the edges, and then on the actual geometry that we're meshing, we create matching name selections for the vertices and the edges. And then we basically map from one to the other. So we create our hexahedral mesh, and then at the power of name selections, we associate those vertices and edges across onto the actual geometry, and then that mesh maps directly onto this geometry. And then you can just refine it and get that. <clears throat> so you can so you take this template and just map it on your complex geometry and end up with this. And then if you want to do a different geometry, you just need to make sure you have all the right name selections on it, import that, and this template will map straight onto that geometry and your mesh is already created. You don't have to start from scratch again like you would with that traditional blocking approach. Okay, so that's the uh, new meshing tool. The other thing I want to show you in space plane is the feature tracking. So for uh, uh, parameter-based optimization work, uh, you need you can do it in space time, but design model has always been a bit better for that because we've had a feature tree, and that tracks all the changes you do in your model uh, much better than a direct model like space time. Uh, so this new tool is kind of bridging the gap between a feature-based model and a direct model. So this is the new button. If you click on that, it adds this tracking window here. Any second now. There we go. Okay, so now any operation we do in the direct modeler, it's going to create a feature here. So I'll just show you by creating some pie in the sky geometry. So I'll make that 50 millimeters and that one 40 millimeters. So you can see things are starting to appear in the feature track. So go into 3D, do a pull operation, make that 20 millimeters. So you can see it's got an extrude face there. I'll do some pull operations on these rounds just to give me something interesting to work with. Call that five millimeters. Whoops. Forgot to deselect. There we go. I'll call that four millimeters. 
<clears throat> and then maybe I'll put a hole in the top. Okay, so now you can see all these features have appeared there. And if you hover your mouse over them, you can see what they represent. So that's over the create two rounds. Uh, extruded face, solidify sketch. So it's nice and um, informative. So you know exactly what they're referring to. And then if you want to say change around, you can expand that and we'll change the radius from say four to six millimeters. And then we hit play and it generates changes. Uh, just like a feature-based modeler, but it's in a direct modeling tool. Uh, we can change the associations, so we can um, we can change the geometry that I selected. I can parameterize it, so I can just click this button here, and it automatically makes a parameter here called radius. And if I go back to Workbench, you can see it's added this to the parameter set. So there's my, my radius. So there's an input parameter for um, some optimization. And if you're so inclined, you can also do um, uh, Python scripting. So if you want to know what the Python commands are for this, you just, ex for this uh, extrude face, for example, you just expand it, click on this guy down here, and I will select all of that. Oops, get all of it. Copy, open notepad, paste it. So there's the Python commands that you need to do this operation. So you can build up your own scripts that create your own geometry, that, that uh, sort of script that geometry creation or uh, script geometry modification. And uh, yeah, so you, you can see here you can actually edit the script in this little window and then hit play and it will make those changes. So that's uh, the feature tracking tool. So uh, hopefully you experiment with that and hopefully it's a bit useful, it's uh, fairly useful to you.